All right, in the last video, we left off discussing these geoglyphs in Kazakhstan, and I found this article which discusses these and uh, some other stuff in Kazakhstan, and I thought it was a good little uh, diving board to launch into some related topics and also some additional geoglyphs. Okay, so the article's called Mysterious 1500-year-old stone complex unearthed in Kazakhstan. And we have um, these geoglyphs nearby, and then general landscape, some artifacts found, and this, uh, some buildings and some walls and stuff. So again, the idea is uh, the Earth's, Earth's surface has been saturated with mysterious things to unearth. So the, um, the fact that this was conveniently within reach of some uh, discovering uh, is, uh, pl is, it's all planned. So um, yeah, I, anytime you find like a hidden site, that site is meant to be like a, um, it's strategically placed. Uh, there's like a never ending, a never ending supply of uh, ruins to unearth, I guess is what I'm getting at. So what else can we say about this? Check out these patterns here. So this, if you look at these patterns carved onto this stone, or this would be like embossed or raised out of the stone. Uh, we see the circles, the diamonds, uh, presumably depicting tools of some kind actually here. But then uh, further down the page we have this site, this derpy uh, horse, which is fairly well carved. However, it's in a style that uh, is very strange. Could just be the artist's uh, personality, but it, uh, it links to some other stuff, as I'll show in a moment. Uh, one sentence that jumped out at me in this article was uh, that the complex contains some stones which look exactly like ones found at Stonehenge in England. So it's a, uh, a reuse of similar styles. And uh, uh, again, the idea of hodgepodge theory, like there's tablets, there's artifacts, there's derpy nonsense, there's geoglyphs, there's uh, stone walls of various styles, so it's a giant hodgepodge of things that uh, tell uh, a they tell a incoherent but enticing and magical story. Um, so these rails on this stone block, that's just uh, richness um, that uh, is not functional, and then these artifacts as well, like the poorly drawn uh, <laughs> animals and stuff. Uh, again, I couldn't do much better, so maybe it, 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 this could be a legit artifact. Uh, not everything is, like absolutely everything is part of this protocol in history. So not everything, but a whole bunch. I would say <laughs> most of history. <laughs> um, or a, a heck of a lot of it, at least. So it wouldn't surprise me if this is just more gibberish or uh, arbitrary details, arbitrary artworks. And then um, this, the whole geoglyph aspect of it nearby and the, uh, the circles on the landscape and all that is just a, uh, a larger scale manifestation of that same strategy. So let's take one more look at this horse here uh, and uh, let's go to the next tab I have open and tell me it doesn't look like this. So this is in England. There's a bunch of uh, horses scattered around giant uh, hundred, couple hundred foot long horses. And then let's go back and look at this, basically the same style. And this is in Kazakhstan, quite a ways away from England. And then this is in England. So uh, it's, again, the, the catch and throw or the, uh, the reuse of certain similar motifs potentially as a way of linking these sites. 
via their uh, similarities. Um, and again, pe many will attempt to say that this is legitimate remains of a legitimate civilization, same with this, and so that means that these, whoever did this horse did that horse over in England, um, and it's like a lost civilization or something, but uh, I, I disagree, or my best guess is that it's more likely that it's simply uh, pattern soup, and some of those patterns are animals, or symbol soup, whatever, and it reuses some of these same uh, figures. Okay, so this is called the Uffington White Horse in England, and fairly decent look at it here. It's 260 feet long, comprised of trenches filled with white chalk, and like late Bronze Age-ish, whenever the Bronze Age is. And so it's kind of an abstract depiction of a horse and it's trenches filled with white chalk. And we see the size of it in relation to these people. And we'll go back an image. I wanted to point out possibly these parallel lines here. There's a lot of uh, lines in the landscape that, uh, surrounding landscape that I wanted to point out. So like the geoglyphs, they don't end where the figures end. They're like, the figures are just kind of part of the whole tapestry of the landscape, which is itself uh, derpy, like the, the horse portion of it. Uh, okay, so just trenches of chalk. Good uh, look at the scale here. And again, possible parallel lines or odd ridges. And interesting detail about this horse here is the occurrence of this large mound structure right nearby, just right next to it basically. Just yet another variation on the idea of a, a derpy or strange detail arbitrarily injected into the landscape. And then also these dents or indentations or uh, divots or ditches, these are part of it as well. They just, they're of a different, slightly different aesthetic. So they look like they might be natural or might not be part of this mound structure, but I'm, I'm saying they are. It's just slightly different pattern. And same thing we observe over here these uh, little divots, and we'll see it better in a couple different photographs in a minute. And then the landscape in general, the stratified wavy look to it, I think is um, heavily contrived. So the horse aspect of it may just be a, uh, a giveaway or a um, maybe even a, a deliberate clue to uh, to get you to take a closer look at the landscape as a whole, or maybe it's just, um, you know, the, the author's sense of humor. They just like to doodle. <laughs> and also these uh, ridges here, uh, they're, um, and the, yeah, the stratification that's uh, evidence to me that the landscape is uh, not what it seems. So some photographs of it here. Here's the horse right there. And then the mound looking uh, fairly deeply grooved. And here we see these lines here. So the landscape itself is uh, questionable in my opinion. And a good look at these uh, dents here as well, where the, the holes or uh, ditches like dug holes or pock marks. So these are, again, part of the gibberish or uh, smearing of the landscape in weird ways. So let's take another look from a different angle. Here's a good look at those indentations or bumps as I was calling them, or inverse bumps if, if you prefer. And good look at the uh, ridges or mounds 
uh, some more odd patterns here. And yeah, these uh, contours of the landscape. And then presumably the rest of the landscape has been heavily sheared or leveled or just uh, modern man has uh, done his thing with it. But um, yeah, so we'll go back to the Google Earth. And so I guess the point I want to make with this horse is that it's uh, on a tablet near the geoglyphs in Kazakhstan, uh, like we were seeing in that photo. And then it's also on a larger scale as a geoglyph here in England. And then it's right next to this mound. So again, the co-occurrence of features is a way of linking them, uh, in my opinion, or putting them nearby or using a similar symbol in two different sides of the planet, thousands of miles away from each other and then combined with the, the dents and stuff, it's all, uh, there's an element of discoverability baked into the design and layout and arrangement of all the patterns. Mm -hmm. So deliberate mystery with a way of solving it, I think. Maybe as some weird game or something like that. But let's uh, keep going. And so one last look at this ring fort here, or whatever you want to call it, and some of the indentations in the landscape, which are related, just basically different variations on whatever created these mounds. So I think you know that I think this already, but I'm, in my opinion, this mound is not functional or was not designed to be functional. It's just patterns. Okay. And then another little uh, aside with this ring fort thing is this one in Russia it's almost identical so check this out we took a look at this in uh, a video or two back and it's um, yeah it's basically the same exact thing as in England here so one's in Russia one's in England but it's the same exact feature basically and if you study them closely it's not identical, like it's not a carbon copy, so to speak, but um, it's almost identical. It's very similar. It would be hard to say that these weren't done by the same person or the same technology, I think. So, uh, remains of a lost civilization? No, nah, I don't think so. I think it's silliness. And it's in England and Russia. Okay, a couple more horses here. Just on, for some reason, I got on a horse kick. Or, uh, you know, how one topic leads into another. And you just go down a rabbit hole for a while. Okay, so England has several of these horses. This is the Folkstone White Horse. And basically, similar style. And these things are re-chalked every couple decades. Like, they'll lay new chalk down. So that's why it looks so uh, crisp and new. Um, I was confused about that at first, but it makes sense. Okay, and then the this one I bring up just as yet another variation, and then also to discuss the surrounding landscape. So the previous horse we studied a minute ago had uh, the ring fort nearby, or the mounds, and this one has these wavy hills. So I think these wavy hillsides are artificial gibberish as well. And this is right on top of that. And we don't see the artificial gibberish uh, quite as prominently nearby, although there's certainly some evidence of possible carving. Well, yeah, probably. But it's particularly prominent under the horse, I think. So, yeah, we've got these uh, wonky, wavy lines on this hillside. And so this is all artificial business, in my opinion. Just, uh, it's like the same agenda of, 
like behind the horse, behind the creation of the horse, but just that agenda in a different medium, like mapped to uh, styling the landscape as opposed to styling a geoglyph. So we have wavy landscape and then this groove here, I would guess is basically the same thing. Just artificial, long artificial groove, possible trail there, modern trail. Yeah, this is a thing in England. And then what else do we have to check out? We have this one in Mexico, Mexican white horse, but apparently it's a replica of the Uffington white horse. Yeah, that's what the first one's called, Uffington white horse. Uh, and this is like a replica near Juarez, Mexico. Um, however, I just wanted to discuss the idea of replicas in general. I think there's, there's definitely some kind of unfolding script like very long-term, very patient script unfolding over the, the millennia, it would appear. And so sometimes I suspect that these restorations and replicas are um, constructed as part of that script. So it's not as if some genuine, legit artist came and did this for self-expression or if they did, then they were executing part of the script without knowing it. Um, I think it's more likely that this uh, horse here is done as a, a replica of the Uffington horse, but also as a ongoing part of the, the protocol, as I call it. Uh, so for instance, like 600 years from now, this could be passed off as um, an ancient relic or something like that, or it would at least be uh, suspected that uh, any number of origin stories are true. So like we would lose the true story of this uh, construction as a replica, and then it could be used as any number of mysterious cover stories. So this could be like the the birth of a deliberate mystery right here, or one one little branch of deliberate mystery. <clears throat> that's, that's possible. I mean, it could be an in innocent artist's replica, but I mean, first of all, look at the scale of it. And then, yeah, it's also possible that it's been there just as long as the Uffington hor uh, horse, but then it just somehow got uh, passed off as a replica when it's not. That's possible, but uh, it's for consideration. Okay, and then we have this guy in England. This is a, I guess you'd call it a geoglyph. It's etched in chalk, so it's called the Cern Abbas Giant, and it's carved into the white chalk found underneath a layer of turf, as this article was saying, and is rechalked every 25 years. So that's why it looks so um, well defined. <laughs> and again, the rechalking or re restoring, or um, yeah, the restoration of sites, I think is often part of the unfolding script as well. The slow changes introduced into these patterns uh, over time so that they're constantly shifting, potentially. So this uh, reminiscent of the Mari man in Australia, just off the top of my head, if you want to look that up. But um, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if this looked slightly different 30 years ago and then slightly different 30 years before that and 30 years before that, uh, just choosing an arbitrary number 30. But so this may be continually deformed and reformed and deformed again as part of a constant shifting and shuffling uh, to, uh, again, discombobulate the human populace through sophisticated, strange methods, very strange methods. But the aesthetic in general, I don't think it's early man expressing himself, or not early man, I don't know if that's the right term, but 
people like 500 or a thousand years ago. I don't think it's legit art. I think it's basically a plumbus or a deliberate mystery or just false, false details like a decoy, you know, an attention trap, that type of deal. And taking a look at this guy or some of the other features. So I like this image because again, we get a look at the waviness and the etched lines into the surface or perhaps not etched, but artificially sculpted or stratified. And here we see the rechalking going on. And okay, a few different looks here. We've got the surrounding um, grooves in the landscape. And especially here, we're seeing the stratifications. And this image is great because we get a look at this mound right here. So this one, the ho that Uffington horse had a mound nearby, and this one has this mound-like border, uh, this mound-like gibberish, and then this ring fort kind of mound here. So it's all um, variations on geometrical motifs, more or less. Here's a better image. The, the strata of uh, landscape or uh, bedrock or whatever, and then the, the geometric enclosing or the polygon he's inside, and then the ring fort, and then, yeah, I mean, the general uh, appearance of this guy as well, like the alien head and the, the penis and the uh, exaggerated nipples. It's sensational. It, this is like the tabloids of art. It's like exaggerated. Uh, I'm laughing at some of these. This one, Homer Simpson <laughs> playing tennis. Uh, it's sensationalized or it's designed in such a way as to strike awe or mesmerization into the beholder. Uh, a very particular kind. I think there may even be an aspect of like psychologically triangulating people sexually, like our sexual relationships and uh, outlooks and behaviors. I think there may be some aspect of managing our sexuality by way of putting sexual imagery and art in very particular ways. So this could be part of an agenda to scramble human sexuality because I mean this whole scene considered as a whole is basically scrambled eggs in my opinion you've got the landscape you've got the dude you've got the enclosure with of the dude you've got the ring fort you've got these little mounds perhaps the uh, and then the the very goofy features with the exaggerated penis so that there may be like a uh, some sub agenda behind this to scramble humans sexuality that just occurred to me off the top of my head but it seems at least somewhat likely and I just I wanted to show this guy because of the ring fort in the background and then some of the landscape stuff another good image here so I think the all, all of the different types of features you see in this image I think are linked or done by the same uh, script or agenda behind it or author perhaps okay so weird google earth this is just an article just listing like 10 different geoglyphs and some of them we already covered like the kazakhstan ones and the horse i wanted to show this one the australian desert mounds Again, just silly gibberish, in my opinion. And what else is noteworthy? This Arizona Triangle right here. Just a random triangle in the Arizona desert. Um, this thing uh, in Peru, kind of very similar to the Nazca lines. Just a nonsensical trapezoidal long groove. Uh, this thing, this one we already looked at, the giant fingerprint. This is in England as well. This may be an allusion to the maze, that's allusion with an A, the maze motif or theme. So like uh, kind of 
in the show TV show Westworld, there's the idea of the maze, like the maze wasn't meant for you and all that. Uh, the center of the maze, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this may be like a, an average between a fingerprint and that maze aesthetic or uh, motif or symbol. And it may just be a fingerprint, so I may be reading too much into it, but uh, I don't think it's legitimate art. I think it's definite, uh, basically the same same idea as this, and possibly like uh, from a um, gloating standpoint or showboating, or um, you know, like like an end zone dance in football when you uh, show off and do a, a crazy, you know, backflip or whatever. So this may be similar to that, just like from a, a bragging perspective, they uh, they just put a bunch of like ironic imagery on the landscape, like like d they put dicks everywhere on, in Roman art, and then they put a fingerprint here, like yeah, this is our work, this is our fingerprint, uh, and that's just one possibility. I mean. I think it's just more gibberish, most likely, more attention traps, or silly patterns, which came about in any number of ways, but it's silly patterns is the main idea behind it. Okay, and just a couple more images here, just really just exploring some miscellaneous examples in this video to wrap up the, uh, the topic of geoglyphs. And there's thousands and thousands more we could show. I just kind of picked a handful to uh, to feature here. So this one, geoglyphs on the Central Asian steppes. And again, look at the, the proportions here, the scale of it. This is an automobile. And then we have the sun or similar type of circle here with a cross. And, you know, we could spend 10 years analyzing the cross and what a cross means and why these rays are different lengths and we could speculate on all that and the we could speculate on why this camel or whatever it's supposed to be why it's all tweaked out like this you know was it just poor taste or was it artistic expression or was it uh, superstitious signals to the gods or was it aliens or you know what was it and uh, it's just a deliberate mystery delivered via strange features and uh, strange appearances, strange imagery. And here we have like an antelope or a goat or something. And it's not all arbitrary. I'll say that one more time. Like all the patterns that we observe, including this geoglyph, they're not completely arbitrary. Like some are uh, region specific. Like there may be like bighorn sheep in this area or something like that. And then we have this guy. So it's, there's a lot of factors considered in the generation of a pattern and the size of it and the medium. Uh, so it's, again, there has to be some type of computer assisted aspect to it or uh, AI as we call it or whatever. So this is like very poorly drawn thingamajig, very huge. We see the massive scale of these things. So I think of, okay, you know what? I'm noticing something else right here. Okay, well, first of all, look at this. <laughs> I don't know where, where this is, but that's pretty. I mean, if that's not a plumbus, I don't know what is, right? It's a, a feature salad. It's, it's almost a, uh, what, what do you call those things? A fire stoker like the, the rod you have next to a fireplace, or it's almost a key, it's almost a, uh, like a, a wand, or maybe even a beetle, like a bug, like it's quasi-biological, it's uh, quasi-artistic, like the artwork you might see on a playing card, like the fleur-de-lis or whatever, uh, it's, it's a, a feature sex in a very particular way as to add up to nonsense which looks like it's almost not nonsense okay and then this guy i th i think uh what is this blythe intaglios yeah so we covered this already but i just noticed 
the polygon around him. So let's go back. This is in California. Let's go back to this guy in England. So the CERN Abbas giant in England has this polygon enclosing him. So once again, the idea of there's, there's a better image, I guess it's kind of small, but here we see the enclosing uh, hexagon or whatever. The idea of uh, similar styles or uh, stylistic strategies or motifs, artistic motifs, ge geometric motifs or shapes, um, and the combination of the, the guy with the bounding polygon. Uh, that is basically uh, a catch and throw or a hinty hint, uh, a clue perhaps that this one in California is basically done by the same hand uh, for the same purpose or something like that. So again, a, a dude in a polygon, a derpy dude in a polygon. Okay. On second thought, if that's just an, a modern fence, I'm going to feel stupid, but I don't think it is. I think it's a feature of the landscape. Like, yeah, it's looking like more like a groove in the landscape, which actually continues here. So I don't think that's a modern fence around him, like protecting him from the public or whatever. I think we're looking more at a groove. I just want to be 100% sure. I don't want to say something stupid or just be wrong. But yeah, this bounding box is a, a dead giveaway that it's by the same person who did these blithe intaglios, as they're called in California. So same same authorship in England as in California here on this geoglyph phenomenon. Um, this one's arranged rocks. The one in England is like chalk. Like carved into the chalky landscape and then rechalked every few years or whatever. And I would say it's just output of the same ongoing protocol. And there, there may not be an aspect of where they're trying to out themselves, you know, with clues, but some clues exist nonetheless. So like maybe they didn't put this dude in a bounding box as a deliberate clue. Maybe this is simply the output of an algorithm which recycles some of its motifs quite a bit. Uh, and if you look at thousands and thousands and thousands of examples of the artwork it creates, then eventually you're going to see some of the hallmarks of the algorithm manifesting. So that could be the case as well. Like, So rather than a deliberate clue, it's just similar output of whatever algorithm is behind this. So neither one would surprise me, honestly. I don't quite have a strong opinion on that. But yeah, that's surprising to me. The I didn't notice that before, the uh, the bounding box for this dude. and Very, very cool uh, example there. All right, uh, let's move on to... This is just a Pinterest page for geoglyphs. Pinterest is a very good resource. Um, it is hit and miss just because some of the images you'll see are photoshopped, but I just thought this was a good resource for um, just looking at a lot of geoglyphs in one Eiffel or one page. And um, let's look at a couple of these. We've got this, uh, again, the square mound. This is similar to the concentric rings mound we were looking at in, uh, near the horse in England and also the one in Russia. Of course, these derpy figures, the Jordan geoglyphs, this guy, I'll come back to this guy in a moment because I have an important point to make about him. Um, I think that's in Chile, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Chile. Here's, here's what it looks like from below. And here's the Mari Man in Australia. Uh, so I think it's really cool to see all these side by side. We've got this strange uh, another look at it here it's a very large figure here even if it's modern I think a lot of the modern large-scale geoglyphs are somehow part of this uh, ongoing unfolding of a script or program or protocol to discombobulate 
in my opinion. And I got really excited a while back when I found or when I had the uh, the insight that crop circles are probably part of this as well. So that again, that would be the along the lines of the ongoing aspect of it, like because these things are popping up all the time, uh, apparently. I mean, only really in certain regions, but um, <laughs> the the appearance of crop circles starting in the whenever it started in the 40s or whatever whenever the first crop circles were and the whole agenda behind it is a false rabbit hole to chase so you've probably seen the ones with like the alien code like the computer code and like the signals back and forth from aliens like that's all under the umbrella of a unified attempt to give people a false thing to study a big dead-end mystery that's contrived uh, like the the mystery maker is playing all sides of this story they're playing like the they're making the circles first of all and then they're making the things that, that the circles reference or some of them and then they're uh, they're also controlling some of the reactions to the circles and setting up some of those websites maybe <laughs> potentially and then uh um and like the codes like nasa sent a code or something like that or what's it called uh carl sagan's operation whatever he was doing i forget what it's called c SETI or something like that i can't remember but they sent out like a a message from humans to aliens and that was this big significant uh milestone type of deal or you know it's got a quite a bit of news coverage and then the aliens sent back a message in the crop circle but that's uh that whole both sides of that are managed by some mystery maker who's tugging all the strings uh, hopefully that makes sense and this one having this is basically a plumbus obviously just a collage of features miscellaneous things and it definitely looks charged with meaning and charged with symbolism and uh semantic intent or uh, you know it has a linguistic quality to it right doesn't it however it's all very carefully calculated the design is carefully calculated in such a way that it looks like it means a million things when it ultimately adds up to nothing <laughs> so this is you know this looks like a satellite it looks like a signal sent out it looks like a communication it looks like uh, an arrangement of s celestial bodies perhaps it looks like computer code perhaps um, but ultimately it's a nothing burger which is the same the same goes for all of these basically like what is this an yet another guy in england with the stratification of the landscape you see and then um <laughs> whatever this is this is a new one for me. I haven't seen this before. Cheesa. Maybe that's a typo, but uh, that's pretty, pretty derpy. Okay. Just derp everywhere. And let me, um, I think I've made most of the points I want to make on these geoglyphs. However, this one in particular, let's check out this dude in Chile. And... So I want to point out the lines across his legs. So pay careful attention to this. These lines across his legs. Nazca line. I don't know if this is a legit image, but it looks quite a bit like this one. Anyways. Um, so these lines across his legs. Pay careful attention to that. Just the aesthetic of it. The way it looks. And obviously we have the lines across his head as well. Uh, just kind of shove that for a minute and his hair is in these weird lines as well but these these cross hatching lines on his legs remind me and we actually see it better in this image so take a look at this dash here this gash and then look at camp pendleton in southern california so see this right here these gashes right there this in my opinion is circumstantial evidence of uh the the output of some kind of algorithm creating these 
all these patterns. So a similar uh, pattern generating or path generating algorithm was used to create these coastal features as was used to create this guy in Chile, uh, you know, thousands of miles away. So it's, um, again, it's possible that it's deliberate clues. It's also possible that it's just uh, similar motifs recycled inside the algorithm. You know, they're not deliberately trying to out themselves. Maybe it's just the motifs are recycled. Hmm, let me try and say everything I want to say. So these lines, they have a, a similar look to them, like the taper here. There's, I don't think there's any practical function for that. It's, or even any uh, artistic explanation for that. They're like more or less arbitrary details on the figure, which is derpy in itself. It doesn't really make any sense. It's, it's very abstract looking, but these features in particular strike me as variations on these hashes across straight ravines that we see all over the world. So this is just one example that I happened to remember, but uh, in many locations across the world we see this crosshatch um, across a linear ravine. So it's hallmarks of some type of resurfacing effort and uh, an ongoing effort in my opinion. And here we see, again, I already showed this in a previous video, this area, but we see these, this path here um, specifically designed, in my opinion, to straddle multiple possible explanations. Like it looks like a, a track of some kind, like it's, it's made to look like it may have been an ancient high technology vehicle track or something like that, but um, it's not vehicle tracks. It's just um, patterns which are very strategically oriented and uh, designed. <clears throat> so these lines here are basically hallmarks of the same type of style or strategy used to create this chili guy. So this is the same authorship, it's the same program, it's the same agenda and very similar implementation as well, I think, uh, or very similar method, similar like artistic fingerprint, let's say that. So circumstantial evidence in my opinion that this whole area is, or I mean the whole earth, the whole surface of the earth is reconfigured heavily by one hand. So the same person who did that, Chile dude, did the Nazca lines and they also did these grooves along the coast and they also resurfaced everything. They did the, the ring mounds around the big white horse in Uffington. So this is all stuff that can be linked by carefully studying the symbolic or geometric motifs that recur in all of these sites. Just my opinion, but it's growing increasingly obvious that there's a heavy link between places like this and places like this. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So just two more images here in this video, and they're both from the Congo, and these are from the uh, Zero Control BitTubers page. Hopefully I'll remember to link that in the description. But uh, yeah, we've seen this type of gibberish elsewhere like Papua and uh, Scotland and Peru and stuff. So this is again a type of gibberish. This is borderline geoglyphs. So I discussed stuff like this in the strange patterns videos, but also this is very similar to a geoglyph or to stone walls, like the meandering stone walls that we see. So this is like a, uh, a category neighbor of the uh, strange patterns <laughs> to get a little bit nerdy. 
Okay, so actually, let me go back an image. So this, like the spirit of this type of pattern combined with the spirit of this type of guy, like if you went halfway between those, like this is very blatantly anthropomorphic and artistic. So this is a deliberate art piece, apparently, or at least that's what we're made to believe. And then this one is much less so, but if you took something halfway in the middle, you might get something like this. So again, the idea of a continuous shifting or a twisting of the dial or tuning of the, the knobs on the, uh, the parameters of the algorithm. So you can, uh, there's probably a knob you can twist to make a pattern more biological looking or more angular or more haphazard or more anthropomorphic or any number of things or more, more meaningful. Like you could literally design a knob into your algorithm or a dial or a button, which makes a pattern more charged with suggestive symbolism. Like this is almost symbolic, not quite, but it's much more symbolic than this. This is just kind of mechanical and slightly weird. But if you tw uh, had a, a knob right here that said, crank it to symbolic, like let's take symbolism from a one and let's take that to an eight. So, well, then you get something like this and uh, you get something that almost looks linguistic. It's like a, the idea from Rick and Morty of a Cronenberg reality or a, uh, some kind of ape shit gibberish that like a Franken doodle again that uh, resides in this weird middle space of like almost this, almost that, like this is almost a hand. And then these circle features are almost uh, looking like they could have been functional or it could be mounds from mining or something like that. It's residing in this weird middle space and same thing in this image. I feel like I'm not quite explaining that as well as I want to. Maybe I'll find better or more careful words in the future. And I mean, at this point, I'm basically just repeating myself over and over in my videos. <laughs> so I, I kind of apologize for that. But there's something about seeing example after example, which I think is useful, or it really drives the point home. So this one, I don't know, we could say is like, if you imagined taking a 10% cityscape or like the urban layout, like these are almost like streets and, and houses, like the layout of that. And then you just mix that in with the patterns of, you know, random squares and circles and stuff. And this is basically, it's pretty similar to a, a geoglyph. It's kind of raised mounds or ditches, arranged stones and sculpted dirt. So that's what comprises this, you know, stacked rocks sometimes. So it's all different faces of the same shape, so to speak, which is um, a big, strange manifester of weird patterns. <laughs> a big sculptor of both the Earth's surface and human perception. So I think that'll do it for this video. Thank you for watching. I know it gets a little long-winded sometimes and I don't edit out all my uhs and ums and sometimes I, the video has some silence or I get a little sloppy or something like that. I know it's kind of tedious at times to trudge through a unedited raw video, but uh, thank you for your time and uh, hopefully you get something out of this and hopefully something good comes of all of this. So have a good day or evening and I will talk to you next time. Okay, bye.